redemption. It's a big talking point in the Miraculous fandom, something you regularly see crop up as a potential story direction for various different characters, characters such as Chloe, or Gabe, or Felix. Those would probably be our big three in that regard, characters who are presented as pretty unambiguously bad guys at first, but who, over time, are slightly softened as the writers decide what they want to do with them. We first saw this play out with the character of Chloe. In season one, she was just a major twerp, a cruel bully. She's directly responsible for a number of akumatizations, whether directly or indirectly. She just sucks. And honestly, in many ways, she feels like the actual villain of season one. Not Gabe or Hawk Moth, her. And yet then in season two, we started to get some more development for her character, a bit of story. We got backstory that explained, well, why she became such a bully. We'd already seen her super enabling father who'd probably let her get away with murder, which partially explained things. But then we also had the introduction of her mother Audrey in season two, who is without a doubt one of the most awful and terrible characters in the entirety of the show. She's abusive, vicious, mean, not even a scrap of love to give to either of her daughters or her husband. And it was made rather clear throughout that season and every subsequent season that Chloe really wants her attention and love and validation. And seemingly she's been trying to emulate her to get that affection, to fill that void. But when she finally has a better offer, somebody to actually look up to, namely Ladybug, she tries to be better. She got to be miraculous, she became a hero, and while she was still an arrogant person, still had those negative traits, she became a far more interesting character, an anti-hero type. Until she went full villain and joined up with Hawk Moth when she felt betrayed by Ladybug not giving her the miraculous anymore as she'd revealed her identity. On purpose. Which in turn, signalled a complete and utter end to her redemption story. And saw her get worse and worse with subsequent episodes and seasons retroactively making her even more of a cruel bully than she'd been previously presented as. And yeah, people did not exactly react well to this perceived character regression as her arc seemed to actually be leading somewhere until it wasn't. And that rubbed people the wrong way, made them feel like their time had been wasted. And no place was more angry than social media. And the writers, and by the writers we are talking about Asterix, like let's be real, nobody gets into it with the fans more than this dude. I mean, come to think of it, does any other showrunner engage with all the hate as much as this guy? He needs to learn there's a block button for a reason. But yeah, the dude seems to hate Chloe, like actually hate her. Odd for a man that created her, but I don't know, maybe she's based on like an ex-girlfriend or something like that. And so he very much doubled down on everything. Each season she got worse and worse, more and more irredeemable, and it became clear that this was not a blip. The real blip was her having positive traits at all during season two and parts of season three. <laughs> But yeah, this was a pretty universally disliked development, but over time people moved on, other characters to focus on, etc, etc. Until right at the finish line of the most recent season, we saw three more redemptions back to back to back, Andre, Gabe, and Felix. So Andre decided that despite being a trash to your parent and an enabler of the highest degree, that really, it wasn't his fault that his daughter turned out terribly. It's her own fault and her mum's fault. It's the woman's fault. Plus, he says that in order to impress Audrey, he became a politician instead of a filmmaker, so, you know, they stopped him pursuing his dreams too, I guess. Now he's gonna take in Audrey's affair baby Zoe and raise her instead because, well, she isn't ruined yet. Lol. Nice one, Andre. Nice one. Seriously, is Andre, is that name just cursed in the show? Two dudes have it, and one is the most irredeemable, awful, weird, creepy, and pathetic man-child in the history of the show's run. And the other one's a pretty bad father who refuses to take responsibility for his parenting mistakes. <laughs> Bet you didn't see that one coming. Then we had Gabe, who, after season upon season of being an utterly repugnant person, vicious, cruel, abusive to his son, seemingly turned over a new leaf trying to connect with his boy. He became more sympathetic. He's still doing evil stuff, but he's nice now. See? He makes pancakes. Nobody who makes pancakes could be an evil man, could they? And my dream is to one day play video games for a living. Wow, <laughs> you're so complicated. Well, turns out it could be. As, well, Gabe sucks, he sucks, sucks, sucks. Woo, yeah! Like, he goes full on mask off abuser right there in the last couple of episodes. But then he's sorry and he's regretful right at the end. And he sacrifices himself and voila, he's redeemed apparently. He even gets his own statue and he's remembered by his son and everybody else as a hero who fought against Shadow Moth, Monarch, Hawk Moth, whatever you want to call him. Oh yeah, and Andre got off scot-free too. Whilst apparently, Chloe is just the worst character ever. Hmm, yes, that seems fair and doesn't reek of misogyny or anything like that. Not at all. I mean, watch Lila get the full villain treatment with no redemption too, by the way, and probably Kagami's mum. But no, 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 it's not misogynistic or anything, it's just uh, coincidental. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
Come on, Astro. But regardless, from my list earlier, you may have noticed that I've missed out on one major notable name, one I haven't gone in depth on just yet, and that's Felix. After all, Felix also gets his own redemption of sorts in the final season, eventually joining up with the heroes in order to ensure that he can be with Kagami. Not exactly the most heroic of arcs, but he does get that redemption. And it's very clear from the way he's framed that you're supposed to view him in a positive light by the end of the season. And I think at first, I pretty much bought into that idea. But then I started reading a few comments here and there about how people were somewhat unsure as to whether he even deserved an arc at all. Or rather, deserved a redemption arc. And so, yeah, that in turn got me thinking about whether it even made sense from a character point of view. Or rather, a narrative point of view. Or maybe even just a morality point of view. Does this dude deserve his redemption? Does he deserve the difference in the way he was framed towards the end of the season? Because it's not like they framed him as an anti-hero or somebody who's only helping the heroes for his own good. It's clear he's trying to be a better person and to do the right thing by the end. They even give you his whole sob story to try to lessen the impact of everything he's done previously. But is this earned? Does he deserve it? Guess there's only one way to find out. Comb through his backstory and his appearances, or rather what we've seen play out in the show. And then we can see what we think. So, we're first introduced to the character of Felix Fathom during the course of Season 3 in the aptly named episode, Felix. And right from the get-go, this dude, well, he sucks. I think everybody knew he was going to be an antagonist from the get-go, even before the episode came out, because he's based on that anime concept where his morality is a lot, um, looser. So I think him being an antagonist, at least at first, was clear. Jeez, they didn't muck around with making him seem like a massive piece of shit. He turns up at Adrian's house, is massively snarky to him, smashes cheese under his pillow, which is like, why? That's just mean. Who the hell's gonna do that? But yeah, he smashes the cheese, he intercepts those messages for Adrian that are all sweet and kind, he deletes them so Adrian never gets to see them, then he sends out a nasty message from him, but dressed as Adrian, pretending to be Adrian, trying to sabotage his social life and make him lose all his friends. Despite him surely knowing that before this, Adrian had like two friends max, him and Chloe. Not the most exhaustive list. And then on top of this, off he goes and harasses, assaults, whatever you want to call it, Ladybug by trying to kiss her against her will, to the point that she punches him out. Like, has she ever done that to anybody who wasn't akumatized or mind controlled in some way? Like, straight up slug the dude. And so, you know it's serious, because sometimes the show treats creepy and weird stuff, like stalking for instance, as a joke. It's played up for laughs. This didn't feel like it was a laughing matter. It was used to show that this dude's a bit of a loser. And so even the show is framing it as bad. And you know what the worst part of all this is? Well, besides the assault, because that's probably the worst part in actuality, but unlike his later actions where he's doing things to achieve his overall objectives, here he's just been a prick for the sake of being a prick. Like, he's ruining Adrian's life in all these different ways. It's not leading to some sort of grand scheme. It's not going to help him get his hands on the miraculous of the peacock or the ring or whatever. He's only doing this to be a mean, spiteful, and selfish little brat. There's no end game here, like nothing at all. He's just an asshole. Oh, remember how we were as close as brothers? Well, tough shit now, because I'm going to ruin your whole career. It almost feels out of character, just how awful he is to Adrian in this episode in terms of actively trying to screw him over and wreck his social life. But, oh well, it happens, so you have to include it. And it really drags him down. So the next time he has much plot relevance and does something that could probably, you know, tip the scales of good and bad, he's in Risk slash Strike Back the two-part finale of season four. Now, once again, he's a bit of a dick to Adrian here, but nothing too immense, just rude. But he does do a lot of abhorrent stuff. He completely betrays Ladybug by pretending to be Adrian, before stealing pretty much every miraculous from her when she's had her most vulnerable, gifting them to Gabe in exchange for the peacock. And that's a pretty awful thing to do, namely because Gabe is very obviously insane, he's cruel, he's willing to sacrifice anyone and anything to get what he wants, and he just hurts people in general daily. And now he's given him more weapons. Good stuff. Including one that can travel in time. Grow a brain, mate. And Felix seemingly does not give a shit about any of that. He just wants to achieve his own goals, which... Ugh, not exactly heroic motivations right there. His next major appearance after that is in Emotion, where he's suddenly rather into Kagami, and also he wants revenge on pretty much everybody in the world, so he makes a senti monster, which lets him massacre humanity. Everybody, for the most part. Even babies, I assume. Even animals and puppies and little kitty cats. Dude slaughters the world, and within six episodes, he's helping Kagami come out of her shell, revealing Gabe's secrets to Marinette via interpretive dance, and then is hanging out with everybody at the end at the pool party. And the more I think about it, the more I realize how ridiculous it is that this kid is supposed to be reformed with a simple, I'm sorry, a sob story, and then like two episodes of him being a good person, when in actuality, I do not think the good outweighs the bad here. His introduction episode alone is enough for me to think, ooh, this dude sucks. 
But then he goes and betrays the world for his selfish agenda before murdering everybody, even if he did reverse it in the end. So, yeah, what the hell's up with this? And honestly, I even think this would all be fine if the show acknowledged that he still sucks, but he does the right thing because it creates this grey anti-hero character. But it felt like in those last couple of episodes they made an effort to sweep it under the rug rapidly, have everybody sort of just forgive him and move on, even though it's completely unearned. And I honestly doubt they're really going to mention it again. He's just going to be a hero now. Maybe he'll have a little bit of an edge and some snark, but a hero nonetheless. And I feel like that's the same even for the fan base. I feel like we forget, because when he does appear, he's written in a way that is exciting, he's cool, he stands up to Gabe, he gets shit done. And so you want to see him more, which makes you look past those less than savory aspects of his character, especially early on. But yeah, this dude, this dude, he was hated after his first episode. And now he's so loved, but his redemption was majorly unearned. And I think they need to do more to convince me. Although, you know, as always, these are just my opinions and I'd like to hear yours. What do you think of Felix's redemption arc? Do you agree with me? Maybe not. I'm curious for your thoughts, so make sure to like, comment and subscribe and let me know.